Okay, you know, you guys, welcome back to the True for YouTube channel for just the tips. Today, I am getting it uh, a little bit early because uh, obviously it's an elongated round. So I uh, just thought I would try extra hard this week and get the video out on a Tuesday. Can't guarantee I'll do that every week. Uh, it'll probably usually be the Wednesday, but today, uh, just enjoy it a little bit early. Of course, we're going to be going through round five, um, which uh, has some tasty matchups once again, as you'd hope. And uh, it was a diabolical round of tipping across the board last week. I only scored five with uh, Collingwood letting me down, the Bulldogs letting me down, Carlton letting me down, and uh, who else was it? Uh, tipped Hawthorne to beat St Kilda. So I only scored the five, but it sounds like that was a relatively respectable round of tipping in the scheme of things. Some really, some real doozies in that. Not too many people would pick Gold Coast or West Coast in particular. I am currently 98th, just retaining my spot in the top 100. Also leading the work footy tipping competition out of seven people. So uh, I won't get cocky. I won't get cocky. Uh, but it's looking pretty good, generally speaking. We will shout out the weekly winners. And this week, it was a username that is a series of question marks. So um, that, that that's the best shout out I can give. It's just a series of question marks who got uh, a perfect nine, the only person to do so this round. Uh, and a margin of 18. So well done, question mark. And uh, that takes us to the overall leader, who is Cade Wilson, I believe, for the first time, who is outright first with a score of 28. So well done, Cade. Absolutely killing it, my boy. And in the fantasy, uh, I am 99th in that too. So top 100 for both. I don't mean to brag. Uh, but the overall leader is, once again, James English with his team, Shuckers, who is averaging 22.46. So that is really, really good for quite early in the season. So well done, James. You are a, uh, a fantasy savant. Before we get into it, guys, uh, do go check out the sponsors of the True Footy YouTube channel. Once again, it's manscaped.com, providing 20% off and free shipping to people who watch True Footy if you use the code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word. They've got everything you need to upgrade your manscaping and male grooming routine. And they've got the, the lawnmower 4.0 and all the liquid formulations that go with it. And they've got deodorants and, and stuff like that as well. So well worth a look if you go head to their website and use our discount code. That's enough housekeeping for now. Let's get straight into the round. Once again, using squiggle.com, we have one undefeated team, as you can see up the top right there, and one winless team, Port Adelaide. Who would have picked that at the start of the year? Melbourne 4-0. Well, everyone would have seen that coming to some extent. And Port Adelaide 0-4 below north, below west coast. That's funny. But let's talk about the upcoming games on the Thursday night. It's the Brisbane Lions and Collingwood at the Gabba. The Lions were gallant in defeat against Geelong at GMHBA. Tough away loss, but not too much to write home about. Some would argue that they were a little bit robbed by the umpires in that game, but on the whole, they've displayed some really good footy this year, sitting 3-1 and one at a percentage of 148%. So definitely, uh, definitely a top two team, both quite literally and on the exposed form that we've seen. They've got Collingwood, who uh, had a couple of outs for their game against West Coast, but still a very, very shock loss to uh, to West Coast, who were you know obviously undermanned. So it was a game where Collingwood maybe didn't play horrifically, but didn't take uh, the most of their opportunities, and they happened to come against a team that every opportunity they had, they uh, they took it with both hands. So a little bit unlucky from Collingwood, but a bad loss nonetheless. I, uh, I think I'm going to have to go with the home team here. I think Brisbane are just comfortably a better side. Collingwood are not without any chance of winning this game because they have played well at times this year, but it's a big ask to go to the Gabba and beat the Lions. So I'm pretty confident the Lions will win this by, let's call it 25 points. The second game of the round is North versus Western Bulldogs. And uh, I think it was last year that Bulldogs smashed them by about 127 points, I think it was, uh, early in the year and really made a statement about where they were at as a football team. And now we look at it, they're a little bit closer on the ladder than you would dare to believe at the start of the year. The Bulldogs are 1-3. and three. It's been a disappointing run. And uh, North Melbourne equally 1-3 and three with a percentage uh, of just 67%. I think, I think it's fair to say the Bulldogs are still comfortably a better side. Uh, they've had some tough losses against Richmond. They lost to Carlton and they lost to last year's reigning premiers. And that being said, it hasn't been a great run of form for them. I think they're capable of a lot more, but it hasn't been alarming enough for me to think they might drop this game. And as good as North were last week, going up against Sydney, nearly taking home the four points. What a ridiculous result that would have been if they had pulled it off. But uh, Sydney came in clutch and got the W. And, and despite that encouraging performance, surely, the surely the dogs don't drop this one. If they do, they're in serious doo-doo. As a result, I'm going to tip the Bulldogs to snap back into gear and win this by, let's call it six goals. On Good Friday, West Coast is hosting Sydney at Perth Stadium. I believe they've only played once here, the first ever game 
at Optus Stadium back in 2018. Sydney won that by five goals. I remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, the West Coast obviously had a really good performance against Collingwood. Uh, like I said, took their opportunities whenever they came. Kicked 14 goals, three. And uh, despite having you know no midfield, their transition game was really strong. The defense is looking outstanding this year. Dare I say it, I think McGovern's third in the coaches' votes. And uh, it's not unfair to say that it is all Australian form at the moment. They lost Nat Nui, but should regain... Kelly, Shuey, and potentially Elliot Yo for this week as well. So we're going to see a different looking West Coast lineup. And despite Nat Nui, you'd think their midfield would fare a lot better. Sydney, disappointing against North Melbourne, but eventually came good at the end. And I just think Sydney play well against West Coast. We saw them beat them by 92 points last year at GMHBA Stadium. Uh, West Coast is certainly a chance to win this because, you know, they've got a bit of confidence. I thought some guys, young guys, stood up and played really, really well against the Pies. Uh, but especially with Nat Nui out, I think it's too big an ask. I think it just comes down to who do you think's better. I think Sydney's better. So I think Sydney will win this by, let's call it 18 points. So Kilda then play the Gold Coast Suns, two teams that enjoyed uh, a little bit of a surprise result um, in different ways, really. St. Kilda annihilating Hawthorne. Again, not a shock that they, they won that game, but to win by 69 points in the end like they did... Um, that did take me by surprise, as I covered it in my uh, in my reaction video to the round. But starting to put together uh, some improved football over the last few weeks, and I think at the start of this round they're sitting third on the ladder. So you know, as uh, as lukewarm as I've been on them, you got to give them credit for some good football over the last couple of weeks. So they come against the Suns, who uh, yeah shocked Carlton in, to some extent. Winning by five goals, obviously Carlton had their their injuries to to Cripps and Pitney, which didn't help. But still, Gold Coast uh, two and two, and uh, are playing some reasonable footy. That being said, it's a big ask for them to go and knock off uh, St Kilda in Victoria. These two sides do have good games when they play each other. They've got a history of close games, but I think I think you'd be a brave man to tip Gold Coast. So I think St Kilda have earned my tip well and truly. And I think they'll win by 26 points. Adelaide and Richmond at Adelaide Oval. The 2017 grand finalists going head-to-head -head in Adelaide's home game. Of course, Adelaide going down by four points against the Dons. Again, the Dons have been, you know, a little average this year. So it's hard to put too much stock into that performance. But again, I think they're playing some really reasonable football, Adelaide, for a, for a team that's their list profile is where it's at. Taylor Walker comes back into the side, kicks four goals, picks up where he left off, basically. And Josh Rochelle is playing way better than I, I certainly expected uh, so early in the season. I think he turned up in fantasy or got close and had three goals, 19 possessions as well. Richmond, on the other hand, uh, obviously had a big win over the Western Bulldogs. And again, uh, just still this enigmatic team where you can't quite write them off from a good performance. I don't know if you can say they're going to go deep this year or anything, but you can certainly not guarantee that they're going to lose any given game. Being an Adelaide home game, you give them a red hot chance of an upset here, but I think, I think I'm going to tip Richmond, to be honest. I'm just a little bit more confident that they're going to show up. I think that this will be a hard win for, for Richmond. I could see an upset here, to be honest. A, a home Adelaide crowd could spur them on, and historically, I think Adelaide play well against Richmond at Adelaide Oval, but oh, I'm iffy on it. I'm going to say it's a thriller. I'm going to say Richmond win this by five points. Melbourne then played GW West. Melbourne uh, got the job done last week pretty easily, you would say, with a comfortable five, six goal performance against uh, the Port Adelaide Footy Club. And again, it wasn't a great game of footy, but uh, Melbourne just need to notch up the four points. They've proven themselves as a good side at this stage and uh, certainly have the tools to beat GWS, who, are, in my opinion, have been uh, one of the more disappointing teams from the opening four rounds in terms of what I think they can produce to sit one and three and uh, get blown out of the water in the last quarter against Fremantle in a game that's on paper very, very winnable and probably one they should be winning if they're serious about finals, but they're kind of sitting in no man's land for me. Despite the fact that they shocked Melbourne last year at the MCG, I don't know if they've improved. Uh, it's, it's too early to say for sure, but... On the form that I've seen so far, I can't really give the Giants a serious shot of winning this. So I'm going to say Melbourne actually win this by about 39 points. Carlton versus Port Adelaide at the MCG. This one is uh, a bit of a doozy, actually. Carlton looking like one of the hotter teams in the first three rounds and then really disappointing against the Gold Coast Suns. And I talked about it in my video. You lose Pitney before the game starts. Then Cripps does a hamstring early in the game. And suddenly there are two avenues or two important cogs in their, their stoppage game, which is a strength of theirs. 
is uh, is removed and you know obviously the Suns got them done by five goals so Cripps has been enormous this year and uh, I haven't seen it confirmed anywhere but I presume with a left hamstring he's uh, not going to be fit for this game unfortunately not too sure on the status of Pitney. Port Adelaide have been really disappointing as we all know they've uh, I've talked about it in a previous video the media is not really let up on them and they currently sit bottom of the AFL ladder. Can you tip them with any confidence? I wouldn't say with any confidence but I actually reckon they're a chance here Purely because I, I do wonder if Carlton have a response to uh, to winning clearances. And I think Port Adelaide are dangerous at the moment, considering how much pressure's on them. They haven't been playing good football at all, don't get me wrong. But uh, you could just see them pull one out of their ass pretty soon, to be honest. They're also a very strong clearance side themselves, so they could nullify Carlton's main point of strength there. So, oh, I almost want to tip Port Adelaide here as my upset of the round. Am I going crazy? I actually want to tip Port Adelaide here. I don't want it to be a knee-jerk reaction because, you know, Carlton lost to the Gold Coast Suns. I don't suddenly not rate them anymore, but I just have a funny feeling about it. This is more gut feeling than anything. I'm going to say Port Adelaide get the monkey off their back for one week and shock Carlton by nine points. Essendon then play Fremantle at Marvel Stadium, and uh, this one's not a simple tip either. Essendon currently sitting 17th and playing some not great football, but not terrible football either. Fremantle conversely sit 5th, 3-1, and one, who I think, uh, with all due respect to them, their ladder position is probably inflated by the fixture they've had so far. So I, th I think the gap's not actually that far between those two teams. I feel like Essendon have a knack for beating Fremantle, particularly in Melbourne. I think the trend between these two sides is generally who's who's been the home team will generally win the game. So that being said, I think Fremantle have definitely been better than Essendon this year. I feel like they've built momentum. They weren't great against St Kilda. They weren't great against Adelaide for that matter. The Derby was uh, a bit of a shit show and they were obviously far too good for that West Coast side. And it wasn't really until the last quarter of the Giants game that they really looked like demonstrating the potential that I, I and some others thought they had this year. So on that basis, I think Fremantle's a better team here. And Essendon could win this game, but I will say Fremantle notch an important away win by 11 points. Finally, the Easter Monday game, I believe this is, Hawthorne versus Geelong at the MCG. Two weeks ago, I would have thought this was a, a great contest, but now uh, after seeing Hawthorne get annihilated last week, you have to uh, sort of peg them back a little bit. And Geelong, are just a consistently good team, to be honest. The Hawks have been uh, a funny team this year, you know, re regularly getting less inside 50s and I think less uh, less midfield ball, less clearances, less disposals. And yet they've uh, managed to find ways to win games to some extent. And against St Kilda, they got blown off the park as well so a lot of young players in that side so it's understandable that they would be erratic but they're coming against one of the more consistent sides over the last oh, I want to say a decade to be honest but particularly the last few years Geelong have uh, consistently been a hard team to beat they just managed to win against the Brisbane Lions who are a much tougher opponent than Hawthorne in my opinion and despite this not being a, uh, a home game as such I think I'm just going to go conservative here and say Geelong win this. But I, th I feel like this will be spicy. I don't, I don't think it'll be one-sided. I think Hawthorne will rise to the occasion of Easter Monday. They could definitely win. But I think Geelong are better. So I'm going to tip conservatively. 21 points to Geelong. Well, that is the conclusion of round five. We have one undefeated team, Melbourne. And uh, because I tip Port Adelaide in a shock upset, who would have thought Port Adelaide beating Carlton would be a shock upset four weeks ago? Uh, Port Adelaide lift themselves off the bottom of the ladder. North Melbourne replace them, whereas Essendon, uh, Port again, and West Coast make up the bottom four. St Kilda and Fremantle find themselves third and fourth, which is quite interesting. And then there's kind of a, a mid-table glut. But I've got six teams who are four and one, all five and zero, oh, uh, which is quite interesting. One of them being Fremantle. That stands out to me as the one team that probably isn't quite as good as uh, as the rest of the teams there. But there's certainly in that finals conversation, especially when you consider some of the erratic performances around the league at the moment. That's me, guys. That is my tips for round five. I'm sure I am going to have a few people pick me up for not tipping Carlton this week, and it's probably one I'll change uh, depending on, you know, fitness and availability as well. But uh, let me know in the comments what you think, and let me know how much of a dirtbag I am for not tipping Carlton this week. As always, guys, appreciate your support. Uh, I hope to see you on a live stream at some point this weekend. Haven't decided what it is. And also look out for a podcast we are going to be filming tomorrow on uh, what we've learned from this season so far. So thanks for all your support, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.